Hey, it's Mark Polsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm super pumped for today's guest. He is a serial entrepreneur. However, before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything. Investor ninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. I'm uh, super excited for our guest today because I have, I have like followed this, this guest of ours. I have followed him probably since he started, at least started with, with the website that he has today because man, his approach to building some software designs, I think is just brilliant. And I often wanted to join his program and I'll be honest, I often chickened out. So I'm super excited that he's on here today just because I think that, I think he's got something. Well, he definitely has many things. <laughs> um, in fact, our guest today is Dane Maxwell. If you're not familiar with Dane Maxwell, he has, created over 16 businesses. Now he's failed at 11 of them, but he succeeded at five of them. He's helped create over 15 multimillionaires from his training. And then he is getting other people to run his businesses so he can sing, which is really cool. So his current businesses are thefoundation.com, swipemyideas.com, paperlesspipeline.com, which is real estate transaction management, myagentbase.com, which is real estate intranet software, fearnofeeling.com, and he is the author of, and I'm very excited to read this book, Start From Zero, and um, Dane Maxwell, welcome. Let's do something. <laughs> Let's do something. So, so Dane, kind of let's just rewind the tape real fast and kind of talk to us a little bit about your journey, your entrepreneurial journey and, and what was the impetus for wanting to start uh, or wanting to write a book, start from zero. Well, I had a book publisher contact me, asked me to write a book and I detested them for a really long time when my ego was quite a bit bigger than it is now, which is still probably pretty big. Uh, and, I was like, I'll never write a book. That's so inefficient. It's capital inefficient. Doesn't make any money, et cetera. And then as I've matured or if my heart's open more, one of the two, and a book publisher asked me if I'd write a book. I said, you know, I really do want to leave that kind of legacy for the world. Uh, struggling entrepreneurs are in the many and the number in the many. And there really doesn't need to be any struggle in business. And, uh, and I really hope that people can start to see that business can be pleasurable. And so I, I wrote that uh, and it's, it's quite comprehensive. It's like 302 pages and um, it's, it's, inc it's an incredible book. I, we take people through seven learning adventures on the book. So you embark on seven different adventures. And by the end, if you live that book, you do really well. But the way that I got to, to write that book is through a tremendous amount of failure and uh, a higher level of reflective pattern recognition, if you will where I'm looking at businesses that are working, I'm looking at businesses that are aren't. Like, so I just did a lot of stuff, basically. I did a, a lot of stuff. I started a lot of different things and many of them failed and, and only handfuls uh, succeeded. And when I did the pattern recognition, I saw that the ones that succeeded were not my ideas. Um, you know, they were me going out and listening to people. So I just started going out and listening to people and it's uh, quite vulnerable to do. Um, but it, like, especially in today's market, so like, well, we're recording this in the heat of the coronavirus. And um, it's more important than ever to come back to the basics of business because uh, the basics of the basics of a great business will work so, so well during the coronavirus period of time. And those basics are a very, very clear customer wants a very, very clear result. So we provide a very, very clear mechanism. Yeah very clear customer, wants a very clear result. So we provide a very clear mechanism. So I just got off a call today with a, a yoga instructor who his business just vanished overnight. And so we've got clear customer was people that went to yoga classes. The clear result is they want to be in a group doing yoga again. So now the mechanism becomes a Zoom group yoga class. 
and that just is going to do wonders for him. And he, he'll actually be able to open his yoga studio to the entire country now instead of just being limited to Moines. So his revenue potential will actually could, could 10 to a hundred fold, uh, five to 10 to a hundred fold because his mark his, he's now gets to market to five, 10 to 500 different cities for yoga. And um, the, so the coronavirus can bring tremendous opportunity if, if you're grounded in really solid business fundamentals and it's very, very uh, easy to slip into self-preservation mode, like coronavirus hits and then our, unco our, our unconscious fear of survival comes up and fear isn't, isn't personal and we make it personal. You know, if we feel fear, it's like, oh, I shouldn't feel fear. I don't want to show fear. And I, and I suffer from this because I think fear is personal, but really it's not. You know, if, if I stuck a knife in my own forearm or someone else's forearm, which I never do, but if you stuck a knife just a little in the forearm, it would signal fear to the body. And there'd be literal harm, like harm would become, and, that, and that's not personal. That's how the brain is wired. Like if we're in the woods and we hear a twig snap, we think predator. That's how we're wired. We're wired. If a bear's in the woods and they hear a, a twig snap, they think food. They're wired. Like it's, so, so since, since we're wired, that fear is an automatic response. First, we should be compassionate towards how we're wired. Be like, oh, I'm feeling fear because I'm, I'm having harm. That allows us to be compassionate and really be with fear. And then once we're actually able to be with and accept that fear because we're accepting how we're wired, then we can look at our self-preservation strategy because when most businesses go into self-preservation, they pull back on their advertising. When most people go into self-preservation, they stop listening to people. And you can actually see this widespread in the market, right? In, in, in different markets right now. Um, for example, advertising costs are dramatically reduced right now. And it's just a, it's a, it's a hit. One of my friends is getting customers for $10 when he used to spend $50 to get a customer. Advertising has gone down 80% for him um, because other business owners are pulling back and he's now generating customers for a fifth less. Um, and then you've also then, but then you've also got, if you go into self-preservation, you can have this delusion that like what you think could actually help people. But if you're really listening to them, you'll see that there is so much panic that they couldn't even hear what you have to say. So you go on, you go on Facebook and you see, unfortunately, ads by Tony Robbins that'll say things like, "Today's economy, today's economy is really chart terrible." Da, 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 da. But the one thing that you can control is you. Come to my event, and he's just getting ripped apart on that ad. People, because how you show up during this time is making a tremendous impact on people. So, um, in terms of how I approach business, it's very basic: clear customer clear result, clear mechanism. And you can build, as there are Weight Watchers is, is I think a billion dollar company and their clear customer is women over 40. Their clear result is lose 10 pounds in a week or lose weight. Uh, their clear mechanism is counting points. You can, you can, you can articulate their mechanism in two words um, and they're a billion dollar company. Dave Ramsey is couples in, couples in debt. The clear result has become debt free and the clear mechanism is the debt snowball. So, you know, Scott, you asked like if, you know, Sam Owens came from my organization. Yes, he, um, he couldn't even afford my training. He had to borrow his girlfriend's credit card. And, you know, this, now he's just doing so well. And the reason him and so many other students do well, now Sam's brilliant, um, but it's the reason that so many of these students do well after they listen to these teachings is they're like, oh my God, uh, I've been making this way, way too complicated. So if we go with clear customer, clear result, and clear mechanism, and we really think about that, we can start really helping people because, um, and if you, if you underline that, if you lace that with deep, deep listening, and that deep listening means you start listening first before you speak. So what that means is you're not going to go into a market and say, and man, I, I did this. I was, I was so ashamed after I did it because I was like, Hey guys, like it was like a week, it was like 10 days ago. Like, Hey guys, COVID virus, pretty bad. Buy my book. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I don't like this. I'll do it anyway. Submit, you know, then someone in the comments is like, Oh, COVID virus followed by an offer for your book. I was like, yeah. Oh God, dang it. What did I just do that for? And so then like over the next week, I saw all my friends were doing the same thing. Hey, you guys stuck at home? Learn to start a YouTube course. Hey, you guys stuck at home? Do my fitness training course. Hey, you guys stuck at home? Like, and we all think we're smart. Oh yeah, plug into the relevant new. No, we're freaking idiots. Listen first. So now I, I make that mistake once. Now I go deep listening mode. 
And in deep listening mode, we see where the person is at before we ever present anything to them. And this would transform most any business in the world because you're no longer like talking to a, a wall, but you're actually knowing if you're able to speak with someone. So the way this works now is I make a Facebook post and I say, how are you guys doing, comma, really? And I've, unfortunately, it's been an engaged post. I've got to see there's like 55, some comments, some including mine, of people really saying how they're doing. And when you read about how they're really doing, it's not good. You know, their partner's laid off. They don't know how they're going to make the, 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 the rent or whatever. And like, those are, those are real posts on my wall. And so then you've got Tony Robbins coming, being like, times are tough, control. And they, their brain can't even make that leap because there's no real deep listening. So then, you know, I realize how much I want to help people. So what I do then is I make a, I, um, I open up my calendar for April three hours a day and I'm giving my time away to people who are struggling to give them free mentoring. And then I go, I'll record those and have other people be able to listen to them and I'll be able to find some benefit for myself other than the free time. And but they're not paying anything. And so, but I, so I got that booked and people are booking it and they're like, I got to wait till April 8th to talk to you now, Dane. And that's like a century away. And I'm thinking the same thing and I'm still resisting it. And then I'm like, you know what? I, I need to deeply listen here. So on this morning, when I had a, my yoga teacher asked me for help, instead of saying, go on my calendar, I'll talk to you in three weeks. I said, let's just get a session knocked out after my yoga class. So now I've recorded a Zoom session with him where I walked him through clear customer, clear result, clear mechanism, how we can pivot his business using nothing more than the basics. They'll always work, they'll all, especially the work right now. And um, then I, I helped write him an ad. Um, you know, are you going through yoga class withdrawal? Join my Zoom, you know, very basic. And um, wrote the ad and I showed it all and it's all recorded. And now I've made a Facebook post. Um, and uh, it, um, it was one of the fastest commented posts for the, for the first little bit. Um, but if I can pull it up here, it says, yeah, um, so I posted this an hour ago and it's up to 47 comments in an hour. And um, yesterday after 24 hours, the other one, how are you doing really at 56 comments? How are you doing really? Well, have 56 comments because it's a little harder to think about how you're doing than articulate how you're feeling. It's a little harder than saying yes to this one, but listen to this, listen to this post business owners who are struggling. First, I'll say there is nothing for sale in this post. Just help. That like that rocks me. I'm like, this is based in generosity. Would you like to watch a zoom recording of me coaching a yoga studio? on how to pivot in these times. It includes how to think and even an advertising campaign and shows me setting it up. Let me know, we'll send. The patterns are the same for any business category, any business owner could benefit. So that is created from the initial humiliation of making that post of like, oh, Corona, buy my book, you know, and then being like, oh, I'm a dunce and seeing everybody else do it and like, oh, this is no, no. And then, so now I want to help people for free for the month, three hours a day, five days a week. And then now they're saying that's too far away. So I deep listen again. Now imagine applying that sort of humility in action, not as an opinion, humility as an action of listening and built in the businesses. And it'd be probably no wonder why I've been able to build $2 million businesses or have 15 millionaires because the kinds of entrepreneurs that I train and the people that I teach lead with such heart for the most part that they listen so deeply. And then the only other, the only other thing I would throw on top of this or throw into the mix is that the, the, the best ways that I've, well, I'll, I'll not say anything. Black and white thinking is something I'm trying to move away from, but it would be um, we hire out the mechanism. So we figure out clear customer, we figure out clear result, and then we hire out the mechanism. 
So yeah, um, so I, I I really like that because you know Scott and I are a huge believer of something that you believe as well, which is we can always make more money, but we can't get more time. And so oftentimes, you know, people start a business, and what they're really starting is creating a job for themselves. So I really like that you're you're squarely in that. No, no, this is a real business. You should be able to travel around the world and it produce income for you in yeah. doing that. So, so go ahead, Dan. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I, yeah, I did the 90 day trip around the world and I did all that stuff. And I had 120 grand more than when I left. I didn't work for three months, you know, and that was when I was 27. I'm yeah, I, you, 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 it's so funny you say that. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Cause like when I take my month off in July, we always do better that month. I was gonna say, you know, what I what I like about what Dane's what what Dane's approach is is it starts with listening, right? Like it's it's repeatable. He he has a recipe. We talk a lot about recipes, and we talk about building the recipe of like your land investing business. And but the one thing that he does is he listens before he tries to create a solution for somebody. And I think that even applies to what we do in in like land sales. Like the the thing that I teach and the thing that you I know we both believe in this is listen to what the what the person is trying to do what do they want to do with the land and oftentimes you know people will call us up and they'll say hey you know uh tell me more about the inform uh, about the property uh like well what do you want to know it's dirt right like it's dirt uh, th- what, what do you say about a property it's dirt but essentially if you take dane's approach which is listen let's listen to what they have to say and ask questions right like dane's asking questions why are you interested in this land or what problem are you trying to solve or you know like whatever you uncover things and like in dane's approach like you know like if you and i i think we're on a call with with somebody and they said man my my yoga business is tanking can't get people together because you know we can't we can't like socialize anymore well maybe you and i would have thought zoom zoom calls what's the problem right like and see it's not necessarily these these groundbreaking revelations it's Ground, groundbreaking to the to the yoga instructor because he didn't that's not in his awareness level you and i we're on zoom we've been i'm laughing because you and i've been on zoom for four years right and all of a sudden the world wakes up to zoom and i'm like where you guys been for four years what 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 do you mean zoom stock is zooming through the through the world right now what you know like where have you guys been but see that's the thing is we live in our bubble like what the thing's saying we live in our bubble and the only way for us to get out of our own way is to be curious about other people. What problems are they trying to solve? No, absolutely. And what, what I love about Dane's approach and, and the reason I'm, I'm so ex- excited about the book is that it works in any economy. It's sort of like deep business wisdom, if you will. It's not prescriptive. It's, it's not, well, it's going to, you know, in this, in this economy, it'll work like this, but in this economy, it'll work like this. You know, this is deep business, business wisdom. And typically the, the wisest things that we know about, the, the, this bedrock wisdom, when we look at it, it's just very simple. It's very simple, it's three steps. So uh, I wanna talk a little bit about Dane's, uh, your, your beliefs. Um, you have three beliefs that start from zero. Um, can you kind of walk us through those? No one's asked me about this yet. I'm very excited about this question. Can you re- can you read them out loud for everybody? I, I, would you mind? Freedom of self first. Yes. Freedom of finances second, and freedom of expression through every layer third. Yeah. I mean, do you guys like? Does those hit you like they hit me, or, or are they just kind of like whatever for you guys? <laughs> No, no, absolutely. Um, I, I think that it it really resonates with me. I, I don't I don't think that um, you know people can really make a deep impact in the world until they themselves change at some fundamental level. Yeah, that's great. And then and then you can go out and and do it. So, um, but yeah, okay. that's me. I'd love to know the Dane Maxwell idea of freedom of self first um i uh i love this so much it's like it's so cool it's three sentences i mean so um freedom of self first before freedom of finances 
So I, the way this looks is in reality, if you're not financially taken care of, it might be hard to consider this. So feel free to like get your financial house in order. Like main, be, be main, continue being a mess, you know, until your financial life's in order if you want. For me, I did it. For me, I did financial life first and freedom of self at, the, at the, uh, more so second. But what I saw it actually in, in hindsight, I saw how much more money you could make if you had freedom of self first. So freedom of self means that you're aware of your own thoughts. And the way that you become aware of your own thoughts is through building the skills and muscles of metacognition. Metacognition being the meta layer of your cognitive brain. So you're able to see your own thoughts, metacognition. And with metacognition, there is definitely a skill. It is definitely, definitely in my experience, been on based on the emotion that you're feeling. So um, you could have like metacognition, think of it like a roller coaster. Um, if you're not tall enough to ride the ride, you're going to get your butt kicked. Um, but if you're tall enough to ride the ride, you can ride the roller coaster pretty well. And it could be pretty intense to ride that roller coaster, but you still, you, you know, some might be fun, some might be scary, some might be exhilarating. Um, but if you build your metacognition, say around fear, for example, so you can recognize <clears throat> the way that metacognition of fear would look like is first you say, oh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid. And that'd be a low level of metacognition because you'd be using I and you would be taking it personal and you'd say, I am afraid. At the highest level of metacognition, if there's fear and you're actually there authentically, you would say, there is a fear response in my body. And now if we say, you know, there's a fear response in my body, like I can still feel parts of me. They're like, no, 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 it's I, I am afraid. I am afraid. And that means that I have metacognitive work to do. So what I would do is I would, so that's metacognition with fear. Um, there's metacognition with anger. You might not have very much metacognition with anger. You might just become angry without even being like, you might think you are anger. Um, there's met, so metacognition is the Holy grail of freedom because you can just witness everything instead of like become it. So that's freedom. That's freedom of self. The it's a pretty deep con pretty deep concept, but um, and I love how basic clear customer, clear result, clear mechanism is, but that thing goes as deep as you can imagine. Cause you could apply that to software as a service. You could apply it with, and then when, how do you outsource mechanism and how do you structure the business? But it's, I love that it's on the entry level, very, very basic and that it could be so flexible with the same thing with this freedom of self, the quick way to look at this and to continue to revisit is to ask yourself what you secretly think of yourself. So if you're asking, what do I secretly think of myself? Ooh, piece of crap. Oh, garbage. Huh, I'm actually pretty great. That's what I secretly think of myself. Whatever the answers are, those are um, thoughts. And until the metacognition's built, you might actually think you are what you think you are but we're not who we think we are. And to the part of us that can hear that, that's so, so exciting because what we really are is an infinite field of potential beyond any description. So if we think we're worthless, the best news in the world is that's a thought. It's only a thought. The worst thing that you think of yourself is still only a thought and something can hold it. And the place that holds it is already free. So how this looks on a practical level is what's well, it's, it's so alarmingly simple. I wish I would have, um, I wish I would have learned this sooner, but if you can love yourself so much that you want to find out really what's at the root of who you are, you'll find something like I found that is so remarkably beautiful. And you'll also find a lot of really troubling things, like I, if, you, if, if you're like anything like me, and undoing those troubling things so they're not wrapped around who you are has been my journey for quite a while. Um, and I've, I've really struggled and still struggle a lot with believing in myself. And I, I could never figure that out 
and holding that as a thought example like oh struggling to believe in myself that just being a thought just trips me out like whoa all of a sudden like i can look at a lot of my puzzling business behavior and this is after building seven figure companies and i could look at my puzzling business behavior like why did i do this or why did i do that or why do i only go 80 percent here or why do i let this person handle this over here when i know i'm probably better at it or why do I do these things? And then I like, it's been all pretty simple, a uh, lack of belief in myself. And this is coming after having the 15 millionaire students. Like the outside world didn't change the belief in myself. What's changing the belief in myself is being honest that I don't believe in myself. That's what's actually, so freedom of self would be the freedom to be completely honest about how we feel and think and to know that we're not, any of those things so that's safe to share um, that's freedom of self once that's a handle now you can pursue freedom of finances and finances is going to bring up a lot of stuff if you do metacognitive work on finances you'll probably start to see if you're anything like me that you associate a little bit of your personal worth with your net worth and so if you're making a lot of money there'll be this exaggerated part of your ego that's like i'm somehow better because i figured out how to make money in a way that no other people people other, other people don't know how so i'm somehow better than others and that is uh just bullshit for one um, excuse my language to try and keep that but it's it's it is and um it's it's really important that we lose metacognition around finances because if we think our net worth is our personal worth if we look at that with compassion then we could actually start to see like, whoa, throughout my whole life, people would say, oh, he's worth a billion dollars. He's worth 500 million. And to the innocent part of our brain that we haven't built metacognition around that says something's wrong with us and something needs to change, that something is wrong with us. We'll listen to anything. If, 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 we, if we have a thought something's wrong with us and then we believe it too, then we will do anything we can to try to fix it. So that part's somewhat intelligent. It'll look at someone on the cover of a magazine and say, that person's worth 500 million. No, that's how I'll, that's how I'll get my worth because I believe something's wrong with me. But when we look at something's wrong with me as a thought, <sighs> something's wrong with me. Hell is a thought. It's like, whoa. You know, I, I, I think I just love business. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. I just love business. And it's that, that's that. But like, we can't access that like true nature, that true desire, if we're all bound up into an identity of a character of a thought that we are. So metacognition is how we wake up to this. And we actually have a, we actually have a course on this um, called Making Friends with the Mind. And what we teach in the course is we say, the accelerated way to do this is to find the very worst thing within your mind. Just find the worst thing you can find. And the way you usually do that is just sit still. <laughs> worst thing comes up right away. <laughs> and then when that worst thing comes up, you work to make friends with it. And this is all part of our, this is all part of our journey. Um, you know, right now you guys probably have an identity of me. Um, successful businessman, um, whatever that identity is to know that that's your identity of me, that that is literally only your mind. It has nothing to do with me. Your mind has projected that identity onto me of successful businessman. And we're only, you're only experiencing your own mind of me. And I have a projection of people often as they're suffering. And I project that all over them in some way. And so then I try to like, articulate all these things to show them how I'm not suffering and they're suffering and somehow I'm better than them or some crap like this. And when I see these identities with metacognition, this is like the unending journey, but very rewarding journey of, of, of building metacognition. So when you pursue finances, first thing you might think about is like your net worth is your personal worth. Well, if that's the case, if you're going into business and then you're trying to find an idea, and you find a good idea. You're like, this is my idea. I've got my idea. It's my ticket. If your personal worth thinks it's dependent upon having a successful business, 
you'll cling to the idea. You won't listen to people and you'll push so hard, so fast, so far to try and get successful. And you'll just blitz everything in the path, including your own heart. And you won't listen. So, but if you wake up to um, like, so like success isn't personal. It's not personal, but the, the parts that think something wrong with us or something worthless or whatever might try and make success personal. It's like, ah, I'm somehow worthy now that I have success. So you look at this success isn't personal. So then why do it? And if you, if you think about this long enough, you'll probably come to the conclusion that, Oh, I want to be successful because it feels really damn good. It's not who cares. I mean, it's being like, you know, Scott mentioned how, you know, your, your monthly pa passive income, I mean, forget identity and forget ego. That amount of money coming in every month just feels really damn good. Like, you want, we want, why, why be successful? Do it because it feels amazing. And if you align to that as a vision for success, you know, like, I want to do this because it feels amazing. Instead of I want to do this because somehow my worth is tied to my income. Um, then you can start to see why we've had the students graduate our programs that we do. Because we have such a clear fundamental understanding of business you know, it's such a clear understanding of the fundamental, fundamental, fundamental aspects of freedom of self, which is to recognize mind as a, a thought. And that we're not even who we think we are, even if we think positive. Like even if I'm thinking I'm handsome, or even if I'm thinking I'm intelligent, or even if I'm thinking I'm ugly, none of those things are actually what I am. And it's like, until it's, it's wild. So that's how freedom of self works, recognizing mind through metacognition. Freedom of finances works now you break your personal worth from finances um, then underneath that there are plenty of ways to make money find the one that you like really and you'll be able to do the one that you like because it won't be your worth on the line anymore and then the third one is freedom of expression through every layer like imagine if you could sing your heart out in front of your friends and family like if you could get to that layer where you could just sing your heart out in front of your friends and family, like literally sing. Um, but it also, you know, in, in a way it's, it's sort of ego dissolution. Yeah. It's great. That, that, that fear just goes away and you can express yourself at every, at every layer. There. The fear's there and it's okay. Yeah. So that actually makes it a little more intimidating because now the fear is there and it's like not very comfortable. Like if you do the Wim Hof method where you're doing the deep breathing or you're doing the cold showers, like you go in the cold yeah. shower, that triggers survival fear. Like you get in the cold waters, like, ah, ah, God, harm. And then fear comes. Now you can clench to that fear and like, oh, I'm not going to be afraid, which is fear against fear. Or you can say, all right, this is fear. This is not personal. This is okay. And in that moment, you're like just kind of congruent. So it's not that fear. Yeah. Fears. Yeah. Dan, we, we could talk about this all day, but I, I want to be, um, you know, respectful of your time. And, and for those of you that um, want to go deeper with freedom of self first, uh, I know for me, a, a really transformative book that I read was uh, Jay Krishnamurti, Total Freedom. Now, for, oh. it's, it's, it's very, very, uh, hard to grasp, um, especially uh, if, 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 what, if, what, if what Dane is saying right now makes no sense to you, I recommend getting his program first and learning about medical cognition and then reading Krishnamurti. But if you're getting it, then I think going to Krishnamurti as a, as a uh, sort of a supplement can really help see this uh, in, in a different way, in a different lens. Um, but your, your mentorship, Dane, has been really phenomenal. And one of the, and Scott, would you agree? Like one of the few podcasts where we, we take business and the, the sort of like just basic business wisdom combined with the underlying aspects of it, which is really, you've got to stop sort of listening to the, 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 the mind and, and at some point realize like, you know, you are not your thoughts. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a good podcast. Yeah. So Dan, this has been great. So we're going to ask you now for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, another book, something actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? 
so in the in the book there's seven learning adventures in the first learning adventure is the three little rocks once you have those three rocks you put them in your pocket you're ready for the next six adventures you know and i wrote this book for the hearts of entrepreneurs that they would just build incredible thriving businesses and in order to do that they need to have a few things like just burned into their brain um that second rock is the tip i would give and that tip is the second rock is called the cardinal rule of successful entrepreneurship. And that is that we don't get to decide what works. So literally an embodied humility entering into entrepreneurship, we don't get to decide what works. Let's deeply listen. That'd be the tip. We don't get to decide what works. And if you want to take that extrapolated out, you can see like, we don't get to decide if, if the lost TV series on ABC is going to be a worldwide phenomenon or not, but it was, we don't get to decide that gong gum style was a billion views video. We don't decide what works. Um, and we must, so we must deeply listen. And certainly you could study triggers to create viral videos, et cetera, but um, that's a different, that's a whole different story. If you embody, uh, you wake up in the morning, you're like, you know what? I don't get to decide what works today. It's a great place to work from. That's a tip. The, the book, of course, I would recommend mine, but I'd recommend mine because if I had that, because it doesn't exist anywhere. And this is the book that I wanted more than anything in the world. And when I, if I had the book, I'm 36 now. If I had that book at 21, I would have just wept. I would have wept and wept and wept because it blends everything that I've been craving together from what you do need what you don't need, identity work, four different buildable brains that you can create and focus on individually to build in one superhuman profitable creator. It's got out of the hundreds of skills of entrepreneurship, I think this was some of the seven most lesser known or critical skills that if you have those seven skills, it can really help like ownership thinking versus expert thinking as a skill. Um, and then after that, like it goes into the four growth maturation levels of an entrepreneur. So how does an entrepreneur mature through four growth levels? And it's incredible. Like that, that, that one is incredible. Um, it's a, it's a chart of like 26 different distinctions across four different categories for how you can operate at the highest level of maturity as an entrepreneur. Um, and then after that, we go into the halls of transformation where we talk through 15 different examples of employees who transformed into entrepreneurs. Um, quite a few of them millionaires in that book right next to each person's um, case study story or whatever is a 26 factor analysis of their personality not the same 26 thing I mentioned earlier a personality assessment that's very academic called hexaco and you can see underneath the hood of these successful entrepreneurs so you can stop judging and beating yourself up and see that entrepreneurs are just as flawed as the rest of us but you can see their organization skills, you can see their diligence skills, you can see their prudence, you can see their social self-esteem, you can see their anxiety or the dependence of their fearfulness quantified on a scale of zero to five. And you can see that the guys that are doing a million dollars a year have a fear level of 1.5 or lower. So when we're talking about like a book that I would have wept to have read, that would have ended my um, comparison thoughts, that would have encouraged my heart. Like, I just wish this book would have existed sooner. And I guess I was the one that got to write it. All right. Well, Dane Maxwell, thank you so much. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I, uh, I'll put it in the chat too. Check out fireflies.ai. Fireflies.ai. And uh, basically this links into your Zoom account and it automatically transcribes your Zoom calls for you. So imagine that, like you don't have to send it out to somewhere else. You can just get transcripts right there. Anywhere from free to $20 a month. Check it out. Yeah, Fireflies. Yeah, I, I have checked this out. This is this looks really, really cool. You just add uh, your your AI like a like a person and they just sit on the meeting and um, then report back to you with the notes and the transcription. It's really cool. Um, my tip of the week is obviously learn more about Dane Maxwell. Go to startfromzero.com start from zero.com. Also today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. Learn how 16 weeks up that land investing mountain can literally change your life and 
we're not going to have you build a business, a job for yourself. But as Dane Maxwell talked about, a business, have Scott Todd be your Sherpa, learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a free strategy call and find out if flight school is right for you. All right. I, I want to thank the listeners. Just remind you the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Dane Maxwell from startfromzero.com is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course, as well as the latest wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Dane Maxwell, are we good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Thank you, Dane. All right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>